welcome to worship. My name is Tracy and this is my husband Andrew and today we say goodbye to the Salvation Army in Southend after seven very happy and fulfilling years. Unbelievably today is Farewell Sunday and this coming Thursday will be our last day in charge at Southend. Although we're saying goodbye to Southend we are hoping to continue with our online worship when we get to Norwich. However, reluctantly, after a great deal of prayer and thought, we have decided to take a short break. So this will be the last online service we share with you for four weeks. Since lockdown began in the UK on March the 22nd, 2020, we haven't missed a single week, including Maundy Thursdays, Good Fridays and Christmas. But having looked at the amount we still have to do here, we just feel we need a break. Unlike many core who provide online worship, we don't have a team at Southend. All the videos that we watch every week are put together by Andrew. He finds all the clips, he does the filming and the editing. And as many of you know, it is a time consuming activity. Mm. I've been doing a little bit of research this week into the statistics of our YouTube channel. And <laughs> unbelievably, during the last two and a half years, we have produced over a thousand original videos. Our YouTube channel has attracted over 500 subscribers and collectively our videos have been watched over 300,000 times, which equates to over 40,000 hours of worship. Wow. One of the things that we never expected when we began back in March 2020 is the way in which our services, which we faithfully produced just for the folk at South End in the beginning, have travelled all over the world. And during that time, we've managed to secure viewers in Australia, Canada, America, New Zealand, the Netherlands, South Africa, Norway, Sweden, Germany, the Philippines, Switzerland, Sri Lanka, the Isle of Man, Brazil, Ireland, Denmark, Finland, Jamaica, Poland, Zimbabwe, <laughs> Romania, Kenya, Singapore and Chile. <laughs> Take a breath. <laughs> it's been absolutely exhausting, but it has also probably been the most fulfilling time of my ministry in 40 years of trying to serve God. And God has been so faithful and it's been wonderful and humbling to hear testimonies from all over the world as to how God has impacted you through our worship. So a really big thank you. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for your encouragement, for your love and your prayers. And we really do look forward to connecting with you again once we have safely settled in at Norwich. In the meantime, there are plenty of meetings available on our YouTube channel, which will come up on the screen. You'll notice a real progression in quality when you look back at those early productions in comparison to what we are turning out today. There is a big difference, but the content is the mm, same. Amen. And there's plenty there to feed you over the next four weeks. Mm. Today, all of the songs and music in our worship have been chosen by myself and Tracy simply because they are our favourites and not necessarily because they fit in with the theme of the meeting. And we're going to start with one of my favourite songs, You Can't Stop God From Loving You. Hallelujah.
In a moment, we're going to come before God in prayer. And to help us, we're going to use two lovely songs. The first one is Gowans and Larsons. They shall come from the east, they shall come from the west, and sit down in the kingdom of God. The version that we're going to use featured at the 2015 Boundless Congress in London. And the images chosen by Andrew reflect the Salvation Army's work around the world in response to the pandemic. We have been very blessed during our time at Southend to be supported by some excellent musicians and we want to place on record our thanks mm. to them for their hard work and sensitivity over the last seven mm. years. Amen. In this meeting, all of our music sections will participate, starting with a recording of Southend songsters who, after I have prayed, will bring to us the song, Come Away. Mm.
prayer together. Loving Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for the privilege that we've had in being able to connect with these lovely people for the last two and a half years. And we thank you for the opportunities and the blessings that we have received in the last seven years as we have led the Salvation Army at South End Citadel and for the last five years at South Church Corps. There are so many wonderful people that we have met in that time mm. and they have enhanced our lives and blessed us mm. during that time. And we thank you for the opportunity to get to know them, for those people that we have met and grown to love in that time and those that have already gone on to be with you. Father, we thank you for the opportunities for ministry in this community and we pray for the future and we ask that you will bless and continue to use both South End Citadel and South Church mm. Corps as they um. minister to those communities <clears throat> in the years to come. And we pray for Nicola as she prepares to come and be with these wonderful people and to continue your mission and your ministry here in this community. We pray, Father, that they will bloom, they will flourish and that many more people will come to know you and be part of your kingdom as a result of their ministry here. And we pray for the new South End partnership mm. that will include Shubrinesque Court as well, Father. And we ask that you bless that, that you will bring everybody together so that they can work together for you and produce wonderful results in this part of your vineyard. Mm. We do pray for all of the officers who are moving at this time and for their children as well, for the upheaval that that will bring in their lives, for the change and for the nervousness that many of them will be feeling. And we just pray, Father, that you will continue to use those people wherever you plant them and that they too will be able to continue that ministry just where they are, just where you have placed them, mm. because that's where you need them to be for this season in their ministry. So now as we continue to share in worship together online, we pray for your blessing, we pray that your Holy Spirit will be evident in all that takes place. We pray that people will feel connected and closer to you as a result spent at this time together. And we just ask this, Father, in your precious name. Amen. 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 Don't you be in such a hurry, cause it only leads to worry. There's a time to work, but there's a time to pray. Try to find a quiet place, to hear his voice and seek his face. I can hear the Spirit calling, come away. Perfect peace within, and you hear the spirit. 
and spend some time with me, and my love will set you free. Come and spend some time with me. Our Bible reading this week is taken from Exodus chapter 33, verses 12 to 17. Moses said to the Lord, You have been telling me, lead these people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. You have said, I know you by name, and you have found favour with me. If you are pleased with me, teach me your ways, so I may know you and continue to find favour with you. Remember, this nation is your people. The Lord replied, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. Then Moses said to him, If your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us? What else will distinguish me and your people from all the other people on the face of the earth? And the Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing you have asked, because I am pleased with you, and I know you by name. We're now going to sing again, and it's a recording put together by Darren Middleton, the leader of our worship group in South End. And this video also features musicians from Leon Secor and Rayleigh Corps. Mm. It's one of my favourite songs, Blessed Be Your Name. Mm. Amen.
to thank you for your financial giving over the last two and a half years which has been phenomenal your giving has been absolutely unexpected and so gratefully received the the gift qr code that we put up on the screen every week has resulted in donations of over five thousand pounds so thank you very much we'd also like to take this opportunity to thank our core pianist dennis and his wife margaret who films him every week. They've been so faithful throughout lockdown, in spite of poor health, in providing us with sensitive choices of music every week. And today, Dennis has chosen to play somewhat appropriately, God be with you till we meet again. We're going to sing again, and this is one of my favourite songs. I can clearly remember singing this over 50 years ago in the singing company, and I get as much joy from singing it today as I did then. And although I say it myself, I think it's probably one of the best videos that I've put together during lockdown. I hope that you'll enjoy singing along with us, A Miracle of Grace.
doesn't seem possible that it's been seven years since I stood on the platform and welcomed you as the new commanding officers to South End Citadel Corps, together with Bethany and Charlotte. Where has that time gone? Although you came from just up the road at Rayleigh, South End Corps was very different, but you soon adapted and made yourselves part of our fellowship. You joined our musical sections, which was appreciated, and you threw yourself into every part of core life as you encouraged and worked alongside each of us. We soon came to appreciate your platform ministry with different styles of leadership and song choices. Each Sunday would bring something new and fresh to encourage us and think about in the coming week. It is certainly true to say that in your time here, there have been many changes and challenges along the way, but you have worked with us as we try to focus on the plan God had for us as we progressed into the future. Two particularly challenging times come straight to mind. Firstly, when you was asked to lead both South End and South Church Corps, which you willingly did, but must have put so much pressure on your time as you fully, co fully committed yourselves to this challenging role. I'm not sure how you coped at times as this must have been very difficult to maintain. The second challenge came in the form of COVID, when with all churches, we went into lockdown. As pastors, this must have been so difficult to support and comfort our core family during this difficult time, a time when many were vulnerable and afraid. However, you adapted by setting up a core support system working to provide food and support to the homeless, providing Christmas presents to families who were struggling and so much more. However, it must be the introduction of the online worship that had the most impact, reaching not only our own fellowship, but many people around the world. And this meant that we could continue to worship together and support each other as we shared in this way. I'm aware of the hours that this must have taken to put together each week, but it enabled us to stay strong through what still continues to be trying and difficult times. Another initiative has been the Malachi Project, setting up for those trying to make a new start in life after living on the streets and struggling with forms of addiction. This program is due to start very soon and that is due to the hard work of particularly Tracy and the team. As Corps Secretary, I work closely with Tracy running the business side of the Corps, which is a never ending job. We were always able to encourage each other and I thank Tracy for her caring nature, listening ear and the kindness she showed throughout my time as Corps Secretary. Time does not allow me to go into every aspect of your ministry here at South End, but I would like to say on behalf of our core, a very sincere thank you for your dedication, hard work, friendship, and tireless support to each one of us during your time here. And we wish you every blessing as you move on to your next appointment at Norwich. Yes. Um, hmm. Tracy and Andrew Bale. Well, quite often they're late and um, to seem that enthusiastic. Hang on a minute. I bet someone's been having a go at my script. I'm sure. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> um, no one likes to receive flack, do they? Do you know that word flack? It's a criticism, uh, not very nice usually, but um, flack, I've been thinking about that word flack, F, and how it applies to um, the majors, Tracy and Andrew. Well, first of all, F for faithfulness. They've certainly been very faithful, faithful to God, faithful to their calling, and indeed faithful to the core and the folk in the core. Here, I'm certainly talking for, for South Church, but I'm sure South End Citadel as well. Then uh, the letter L. I know, 
loving. They're certainly very, very loving people. Marvellous. And we've been blessed, haven't we, by the love they've shown to all of us. A. Oh, A. Able. They're so able. Look at the things they've done. Uh, I'm thinking of the Malachi project. I'm thinking of the weekly online meetings they've done, uh, how they've uh, swapped over with meetings. And well, it must be a real headache. But they've been very, very able and shown their ability. C. Caring. They've been caring, certainly all right. Caring for the people in the core those who've been unable to attend through illness, those who've been uh, affected by COVID, uh, those who've been lonely, those who've been uh, not been able to be contacted in some way. They've certainly been caring and they've cared for us all, haven't they? And then last of all, the letter K. Kind. They are kind people. We don't want to lose them, do we? But unfortunately for us, they're going to leave us and they're going to be fortunately joining the folk at Norwich. We wish them well. We wish God's blessing on them. And may God bless those that they preach to, that they bring the word of God to. And I'm sure Norwich will be the richer for them going there. No more seafront driving, I'm afraid, you know, walking on the seafront. Maybe the broad's not too far away. Well, like here where I am. Um, I don't know where I am, really, but there you go. God bless you both and farewell and keep safe. arrived at South End on our welcome Sunday nearly seven years ago now I preached on Luke chapter 4 verses 14 to 20. This is the story where Jesus picks up the scroll in the synagogue and reads from the prophet Isaiah and says to the people assembled there the spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor he has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. At the end of that sermon, during a time of challenge and reflection, I shared a video that I had created 
to the song Not Too Far From Here. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with the words of, the, of that song, but they go like this. Someone is down to their last dime. Someone's running out of time, not too far from here. Someone's got nowhere else to go. They need a little hope, not too far from here. And I may not know their name, but I'm praying just the same that you'll use me, Lord, to wipe away their tears. Because someone's crying, not too far from here. Someone's troubled and confused. Someone's got nothing left to lose. Someone's forgotten how to trust and someone's dying for love. Not too far from here. It may be a stranger's face, but I'm praying for your grace to move in me and take away their fear because somebody's hurting. Not too far from here. Help me, Lord, not to turn away from pain. Help me not to rest while those around me weep. Give me your strength and compassion when somebody finds the road of life too steep. Someone's troubled and confused. Someone's got nothing left to lose. Not too far from here. Someone's forgotten how to trust and someone's dying for love. Not too far from here. Now I'm letting down my guard and I'm opening my heart. Help me speak your love to every needful ear because someone is waiting. Not too far from here. As the song played, images of South End appeared on the screen. Images depicting something of the social need that exists within our city. Pictures of the casinos, the seafront, the amusements, the rough and ready pubs squeezed in between the amusements, and of course the people. Lots of people, some local, but many holiday makers and day trippers. As the song progressed, the images got closer and closer to the location of the hall. Eventually, the camera passed through the front door of the hall, into the lobby, along the aisle, and stopped with the last image being a picture of our mercy seat. As we watched the video and allowed the Holy Spirit to speak to us, we were all reminded in that moment that this responsibility to, to heal, to liberate, to bring good news rests with us all. As the hymn writer puts it, we are the hands, the eyes, the feet and the lips of Christ. And when the Spirit of the Lord rests upon us and anoints us, then through his people, God himself draws close to those who need him. In seven years, very little has changed in relation to the challenge that lies before us. We still find ourselves ministering in a needy city surrounded by needy people, and we don't have to go very far in order to find them. But we do have to go and look for them. Jesus makes this point in the parable of the banquet in Luke chapter 14, where he says to those who are listening to him, go out to the roads and country lanes and compel them to come in so that my house will be full. As we reminded ourselves in a meeting not too long ago now, the Lord's command to go into the world and preach the gospel unto all is just the same today as when his first disciples heard this mighty call. If we're not careful, we can become so overwhelmed by the challenge that we fail to see the enormous resources that God has put at our disposal. Now, I'm quite certain that we are all familiar with Paul's prayer for the young believers in Ephesians chapter 3, where he tells them that God can do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. However, merely being familiar with God's promises is not quite the same as believing in them and acting upon them. It's not in reading God's word that we are more than conquerors. It's only when we stand on the promises of God 
that we cannot fail. Now, we may not be the church we were 30 years ago. We may not be the church we were seven years ago. In our time as leaders here in South End, we have removed over 35 people from the roles because they were promoted to glory. That's nearly a third of our members. Now, of course, as somebody reminded me recently, that's something to rejoice about because it means, hopefully, 35 more people in heaven. But the fact that they're tucked up safe and comfortable in eternity doesn't help us meet the ever-growing needs of our local community. Of course, there is a sting in the tale of God's promise outlined in Paul's letter to the church at Ephesus. There's, there's nearly always a sting in the tale of God's promises. Listen to the whole of Paul's prayer. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the, the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. On closer inspection, we can see that there are several conditions which have to be met if we want to see God do immeasurably more than all we can ask for or imagine. It's all there in the passage. First of all, we have to be strengthened with power in our inner being. Christ has to live in our hearts. And we have to be rooted and established in love to such an extent that if it were possible, we would be filled with the very fullness of God. Now, this is an important observation because God can only do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine if his power is at work within us. God is not going to fulfill this amazing promise apart from us. He's going to do it only if we cooperate with him. On many occasions in the time that we've been here at South End, and indeed during preaching online, I have mentioned Romans 12 many, many times where Paul tells the young Christians, with eyes wide open to the mercies of God, I beg you, my brothers and sisters, as an act of intelligent worship, Give him your bodies as a living sacrifice, consecrated to him and acceptable by him. Moses had an intimate, unique relationship with God, an incredibly personal and intense relationship with God. In the Bible reading that we shared earlier, if you'd gone back a little bit further, we're told that when God spoke to Moses, he spoke to him face to face in the same way that one might speak to a friend. In Numbers chapter 12, verse 8, God says of Moses, with him I speak face to face, clearly and not in riddles. He sees the form of the Lord. Yet in spite of this close relationship, Moses wanted to know more and more about God. <laughs> At a time in his life when most people would have probably been somewhat pleased with the commission that they'd just received, maybe even filled with a little sense of self-importance. Moses, quite the contrary, says the following to God. If you are pleased with me, teach me your ways so I may know you and continue to find favour with you. God replies to Moses, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. 
Moses is still not satisfied. He takes the matter further. He wants to make sure that this responsibility that's been placed upon his shoulders has got God's complete backing. And so he says to God, if your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us? What else will distinguish me and your people from all the other people on the face of the earth? To put it into everyday language, Moses says to God, listen, unless you personally go with us, then we are not moving. Moses makes it clear to the Lord that he is not going to the promised land unless the presence of God goes with him. The presence of God in his life was the most valuable thing to Moses. The possession of the promised land was of secondary importance. There is a much needed and powerful lesson here for us. All too often our number one object is to take the land. Our ambition, as William Booth put it, is the souls of men. What matters to us is the success of our mission, the number of new people coming through the door, the number of people who are discovering the friendship of Jesus. And all of these things are, of course, incredibly important and legitimate, but they must be secondary to knowing the presence of God in our own lives. In fact, if God's presence goes with us, if his love and power are our first object, then all these other things will naturally happen. Do you remember what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6 in the Sermon on the Mount? Seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness and everything else will be given to you as well. When Moses said to God, if your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here, he knew full well that unless God's presence went with the Israelites, they would fail. <laughs> In fact, the next 40 years clearly shows that even with God's presence, they nearly failed. Because of their rebellion and disobedience, a journey that should have taken them just over a month took them 40 years. You know, I genuinely believe that the Salvation Army around the world, the Salvation Army in South End, both at the Citadel and South Church Corps, stands today where Moses stood. <clears throat> we stand, I believe, on the brink of the, of the promised land. God's presence is with us and we are being told to confidently possess the promised land. The New South End Partnership offers so many possibilities for the three, the three fellowships in this area. But it goes without saying that unless God's presence is at the heart of that partnership, in the hearts of all those individuals who participate within that partnership, we have no future. And it's the same wherever you are around the world. It doesn't matter what your church is doing. It doesn't matter what you are doing. Unless God's presence is at the heart of that, it's not going to succeed. God can and will do immeasurably more than all we can ask for or even imagine. But he will only do that through his power at work within us. His presence needs to be felt and known by every individual within the three fellowships and for you around the world, wherever you are. I want to ask you all a question. And in the time that we've spent together, I think it's the most important question I've ever asked you. How real is the presence of God in your life? Do you know the living Lord? Does he walk with you? Does he talk with you along life's narrow way? Is friendship with Jesus the single most important thing in your life? 
Moses knew the truth, that if God's presence went with them, then the sky really was the limit. Moses knew that if God's presence lived in the hearts and minds of the people, then they would quickly and convincingly possess the promised land. But Moses also understood human nature. He was familiar with both the strengths and weaknesses of his people, the people that he was called to lead. And that's why I believe he refused to take even one step towards the promised land until the people understood how important God's presence was to the completion of their mission. As Tracy and I prepare to take up our responsibilities at Norwich City, well, I have to say that we are both, although excited and encouraged by the faith of our leaders in placing us there, are also a little daunted at the responsibilities that are waiting for us in Norfolk. Now, I'm not for one minute suggesting that North Norfolk is the promised land, but what I am suggesting, what I am saying, is that if we, if you, ensure that God's presence goes with us, then wherever we go, wherever we are, we will have success. And God will do abundantly more than all we could ask for, hope for, or even imagine <coughs> because of his power working within us. <coughs> We're going to listen to a beautiful song now that we have used before in online worship. And as we listen to this song, I want to encourage you, wherever you are, just to take the time, if you can, to kneel, but to open up your heart and if God's presence isn't as real to you as it ought to be, perhaps as it once was, then just invite him into your heart. Open yourself up to him. And then whatever your feelings are about the future, if you're here in South End about the new partnership or wherever you are in your part of the world, once you're aware of God's presence in your own life, once you've invited him to come into your heart, then he will give you that peace, that assurance. He will come and he will whisper quietly into your heart and mind, I know the plans I have for you. Plans to give you hope. Plans to give you success. Plans to give you a future. God bless you.
Thank you so much for sharing with us, not only today, but over the last two and a half years. The emails, cards, letters and gifts that we have received have been so encouraging. We've been truly humbled by some of the messages that you've shared with us and your testimonies about how God has worked in your lives as a result of our weekly offerings. Of course, we thank God mm. and we give him all the glory. Hallelujah. But I promise you, we will be back. Mm. Well, as Tracy says, I promise you, we will be back. Online worship is the new open air meeting and who knows what we can put together in the future. Our closing song, you probably guessed what it is and it's probably being repeated all over the territory today. It is, of course, I'll go in the strength of the Lord to work he appoints me to do. Then our benediction this week has already been introduced to us during the offering, but this is a brass arrangement. God be with you till we meet again. And then to play us out, Tracy has chosen one of her favourite pieces of music. It's Dudley Bright's Energetic March Assignment, which contains that wonderful old Salvation Army chorus, which says... The world is needing us. Christ is leading Amen. us. Comrades, let us be true. His love constraining us, prayer sustaining us. Faith will mm. carry us through. His, His service calling us, us none, none appalling us. us. Deeds of valour will do. For souls are needing us. Christ is leading us. Comrades, we will be true. Hallelujah. What a great sentiment as we all move into the future, united in our desire to serve our amazing mm. and wonderful God. Mm. God bless you. And until next time, stay safe. God bless. Thank you.